Welcome to the Sphere of Grace. I'm Pastor Shogun Badji. Thank you for tuning in and God bless you. Today we are looking at how to be thoughtful and meditative in making a vow. And that's wisdom. Praise God. Now listen to this, beloved. A vow commits God. Not only does he commit you, he commits God. And God is a faithful God. And every time we make a vow, we commit God and he commits us. And on the ground of commitment on the both sides, God fulfills his part that you might fulfill yours. Glory to God. So uh, it is important to understand the power of a vow to propel yourself forward and move yourself from where you are to where you ought to be. In addition to that, it is needful to say that you have to be thoughtful and meditative when you're making a vow. Because whatever you pronounce before God, God will write it down. And God commits himself to his part of it. And he expects of you to respond to your own part. And so it is important to be thoughtful and meditative and have a resolve in your heart before you make a vow. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, walk proudly when you go, walk prudently rather, when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know that they do evil. Now, the sacrifice of fool is a commitment that is made to do something unto God according to a vow, but it was not a resolve that came from one's heart. That's the sacrifice of a fool because it was not a thoughtful and meditative resolve. And so the most important thing is for us not to be rash when it comes to altering things before God as a vow. The Bible tells us in verse 2 of the same uh, chapter, it says, Do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God, for God is in heaven and you are on earth, therefore let your words be few. In other words, make sure your vow is coming from your heart. And it's also coming from the revelation of God's word, knowing fully well that God will always do his own part and he expects for you to do your part. Now, for a man to make a vow, and not fulfill it is a very precarious and dangerous thing to do. As powerful as a vow is, a vow can propel you out of trouble as quick as you can snap your finger. It's also very, very, very dangerous if you make a vow and you don't fulfill it. If you have made a vow and you never fulfilled it, listen very carefully, there will be an imbalance in your life. God will call for his vow. The Bible says, praise waits for thee in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. So God is waiting for that vow. You know, he's done his own part. He's gotten you out of trouble. Maybe it was a mess you caused all by yourself, but that notwithstanding his mercy has come to bail you out, and God is pulling you out of that merry clay. But don't forget to be thoughtful and meditative enough to go back and pay your vow. When you pay your vow, then you end that contract. Praise God. But if you don't pay it, the contract is still open. And that means God is expecting you to pay your vow. It sets what is known as an imbalance in your life. And God doesn't want you to have an imbalance in your life. Things will begin to happen that you will not be able to explain until you are meditative enough and come to a place of saying that you need to go back and pay your vow. So it is important for you to be thoughtful and meditative when you're making a vow and make sure that the knowledge of God's word is in your heart and you understand what you're saying while making that vow. Because a vow is powerful and it must be performed. It must be kept. I believe you've been blessed today. Until I come your way again tomorrow, keep living and basking in this fear of grace. I love you and God bless you. Mm-hmm.